Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to go over Deciphering Weather's official 2024 Atlantic hurricane season forecast. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So tomorrow, June 1st, is the official start of the hurricane season 2024. So figured the day before, let's do our official forecast from the ciphering weather. As you can see here, the peak of the hurricane season is between the months of August, September, and October. And then peaking around September 10th, 11th is when we would see that. So further to do, let's go over some basics. We have the North Atlantic regions, which is the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and the Eastern Tropical Atlantic, which make up the main development region, or MDR. We have the Subtropical Atlantic, which is anything off the east coast of the United States, including around Bermuda. And then we have the MAO, the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, which is an area just west of Europe and Africa, which usually if it's warm we have an above average season if it's cold we have an average to below average season and if we look at the temperatures currently in the atlantic as you can see pretty much everywhere is above average with that M mdo uh, really above average right now and the gulf of mexico starting to really fire up in terms of sea surface temperatures as well if we look at actual temperatures, anywhere in the yellows, oranges, and reds, and pinks are favorable to very favorable for tropical development because they're all above 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 and a half degrees Celsius. And the rest of the Atlantic will get there as we go through the rest of the hurricane season, especially time by the time we get to the peak hurricane season. As you can see here, using the North American ensemble model, where most of the Atlantic will be above average especially in the Gulf, Caribbean, and the main development regions. So because of that, our forecast for sea surface temperatures is going to be above average everywhere, with very above average in the Gulf, Caribbean, main development region, and the MAO. Now moving on to our ENSO forecast, concent we're concentrating on the 3.4 Nino index region, which is where we have our developing La Nina with those blue cool colors you can see in our black box right there and currently we have a Nino index of negative 0.173 degrees Celsius and right now that would put us in neutral Enzo territory and we are forecasted by the time we get to the peak of hurricane season by our black arrow to be at least at the threshold of La Nina which is negative 0.5 degrees Celsius and could be as a high or I should say as, as low as negative one degrees Celsius which would make us a moderate La Nina by the time we get to the peak of hurricane season and then only getting stronger as we go towards the fall into the winter which you can see here using the North American ensemble model again where we have all of our models showing a La Nina developing this heat season so what does that mean La Nina basically enhances our normal neutral conditions, but enhances them for the Atlantic as well as the Western Pacific, where we have more rising air. More rising air means we're going to see more hurricanes due to less vertical wind shear. Now, if we look, you can see that on our model here, the CFS model, where across the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean and just north of the main development region, that's what is forecasted for this year for our below average wind shear environment. Anything in the reds, which would be off the east coast of the United States and in the main development region per se, might see a slightly above wind shear. So when those tropical waves come off the coast of Africa, they might struggle initially to develop, but if they move north of it or move into the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, they'll have a much more favorable environment if this holds true. So we're going to stick with that forecast as well, where the main development region might be initially hostile, but then everywhere else will be very favorable for tropical development in terms of our wind shear anomaly. Now, the Madden-Julian oscillation we've been talking about in our recent videos 
as we're going to have one coming up in the beginning of June. And basically that is just an enhanced area of upward motion rising air that traverses eastward from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific, then to the Atlantic. And when we get towards the peak hurricane season, we're going to see a very similar setup where we're going to have a lot of rising air over the western portions of the Indian Ocean and Africa and extending into the eastern portions of the Atlantic Basin with sinking air mostly in the Pacific and South America. And that's going to be in August. September, we're going to see the, pretty much the same thing, maybe not as intensely. And then in October, it in, starts to increase in intensity just a little bit more, as you can see here. So basically what that means with this overall pattern, that would be in the MGO phase diagram, a phase two, which would be very favorable for tropical development in the Atlantic. And in terms of where storms are going to go, if you look at the top left of your screen, the tropical cyclone track density anomaly, anything in the red would show where a lot more of the storms are going to go. The blues would be uh, less frequency. So you see some would, if they come off the coast of Africa, might go initially right out to sea towards the Azores Islands. But then the rest, more concentrated in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and off the east coast of the United States. That doesn't bode well because that's where everybody lives. So what does that mean in terms of where these storms are going? That's going to be determined by our Bermuda Azores High. If it's stronger, it's going to push those storms further west and enter the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. If it's average, they'll be just north of the Caribbean islands and could just skirt the east coast of the United States. And if it's a weak or high pressure, it means a lot more fist storms. They would move up into the middle of the Atlantic a lot more sooner and then go just go right back out to sea. If we look at our models right now, we have an agreement that we're going to have a lot of low pressure signals moving in and around the Caribbean. The one on the left is the American model. It's more concentrated just outside of the Caribbean, south of Bermuda, whereas the Canadian model has a lot more deeper blues, meaning more low pressure systems in and around the Caribbean islands and into the Gulf of Mexico. That would indicate that we're going to have a normal to stronger high pressure system from the Bermuda Azores High. And the tracks of these storms mean they could be going right through the Caribbean, through the islands, just south of the islands, and into the Gulf of Mexico on average for most of these storms developing or not developing. It's going to bring a lot of precipitation this year, and the ones that do develop, unfortunately, might cause a lot of damage, so we need to prepare now just in case. So our landfall probability is in the yellow. We have a slight chance of seeing a storm, tropical storm or hurricane making landfall anywhere in that region. In the orange is we have a moderate chance, so that's pretty much most of the Caribbean, uh, Greater Antilles Islands, from the Houston area in Texas, all the way up to the North Carolina, Virginia border. And then our high greatest chance of seeing tropical storm or hurricane landfall would be the Greater Antilles Islands of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas, and unfortunately, Florida. Will this hold true? We won't know until any storms actually hold up. This is what we've seen over the past, and that is we're going to forecast at the moment. So in terms of actual number of storms we could see this year, typically we would see 14.4 named storms, 7.2 hurricanes, and 3.2 major hurricanes. Last year we saw 20 storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes, so we were above average in storms but average in hurricanes and major hurricanes. Colorado State University is calling for an above average season with 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and five of those becoming major hurricanes. And from deciphering weather, we are basing it off of looking at the analog years where we had a warm Atlantic and uh, transition from El Nino the previous season to La Nina this season. So our analog years that we're using 
are 2016, 2020, 2007, 98, 95, and of course, uh, the big seasons because everybody's predicting a hyperactive seasons of 2005 and 2020 on the high end of our predictions. We have a range where we could see as low as 20 name storms, but as high as 30 name storms. So I'm averaging that out right in the middle at 25 name storms this year. 11 of those could become hurricanes, and out of those, five could become major hurricanes. So this is what we're forecasting right now. We'll make any tweaks as we go through the hurricane season. First name on the list, which we're still waiting for, will be Alberto. But based on our list, we would go through all 21 of these names and then go into the auxiliary list, which came into about in 2021 after they retired the Greek names because in 2020 we had to retire a couple of those because they were used and were disastrous category five, category four storms. So we, we potentially could be going through Adria all the way to Deshaun potentially based on our forecast. Let's see if that actually holds true. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, and I'd like to give a shout out to JJ for donating another $10 to our channel. Thank you very much. And if you would like to donate to the channel because you like what we're doing here, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.